the Designated Drinker Show. I am Louise Salas, your host on the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. And with me, as always, is my friend, my paint-by-number masterpiece, <laughs> the Mixtress DC, Gina. <laughs> Hi, Louise. That's pretty funny. You like yeah, that? Yeah, I do like that. I mean, you know, I'll take it. It's not as good as a hook and rug, but you know, <laughs> is anything as good as the 70s? I don't know. No, I just like to keep you guessing, though. <laughs> Love the 70s. <laughs> so, uh, like you, Gina, there are just some names that are synonymous with great works of art. Uh, masters like Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Van Gogh, Picasso, Frida, Degas, Ansel, and one of my favorites, Avedon. <laughs> and all of them are considered masters of their art. Um, which brings me to today's designated drinker. Please welcome to the show, none other than the master himself, Tony Abiganum, the original modern mixologist. Thank you very much. Did I get it right, Tony? You please say it. I close. Just let me you have it close. So close. That was <laughs> correct. Abu Ganim just rolls off the tongue. So, Tony, it really is an honor to have you on the show. So, thank you. Um, and uh, I can't wait for you to share your really colorful journey with everyone. It's pretty amazing and inspiring and loads of fun. Um, but first, Jean has something that she would like to mark the moment with. Well, you want a cocktail? Well, you. Told me there'd be cocktails. Are you, are you feeling anything in particular, or am I going to be like, do you want me, you know, to pull up a pineapple and put a whole bunch of stuff in it? Well, you know, I'm going to say she doesn't usually ask the guests. You are one special guy. Um, hello. Well, I'm sure the pineapple would be delicious, but as you may or may not know, my favorite drink is the Negroni, and if you would be so willing, I, I'm. Love a Negroni. Would you love a Negroni? Absolutely. I always love a Negroni. Well, I, would, I would love to make you a Negroni. I only have two glasses right now. Do you have any? Oh, well, before you get started, I brought you a little <laughs> gift. <laughs> that I've been eyeing at the corner of my eye. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I'm <laughs> this is doubly special, Gina. This is uh, from my line of bar tools. This is my mixing beaker and my 24-degree spoon. Um, perfect for making Negronis. But this one is... Like I said, doubly special because this was a Team Negroni 2018 Negroni Week beaker. We only made 24 of these, and uh, that's a little gift for me to you. Lucky you. And every once in a while, hard to win like this. <laughs> <laughs> if there was an emoji city, it would be like this right now, flourishing all over me. <laughs> Thank well, you. And I'm sure in your hands, it's going to make a wonderful Negroni. Look how happy I just got. I'm like a kid in the candy store. I'm like, what? What do you think you what? Oh, yes. So okay. I'm going to ask the question. You um, mentioned 24 degree spoon. Yeah. And yeah. What, what does that, what does, why? Well, so for all of us who don't know. Six, seven years ago, I came to the conclusion that there was a real lack of high quality, professional, affordable bar tools available to bartenders. So I designed these uh, with product counsel to Chicago, and I remember doing events with Dale DeGroff, and I'd always watch him, and he'd bend his <laughs> bar spoon so that when the spoon is in the middle, the top is in the middle. And as you put the spoon along the edge, the top stays in the middle. So I kind of took that, and I designed the spoon with a 24-degree uh, angle to it that measures one teaspoon that has a blunt end and has a beautiful balance. So really... Beautiful for stirring cocktails. We'll, we'll let See? Gina be the judge of that. Hold on. I First of all, I'm loving everything you're saying. I'm just making, I'm, you know, I'm going to cut to the chase here. It's cocktail hour. And, you know, it's time, right? So I have to, like, make So what you got here? So we need plastic Negroni. So basically, um, it's a it's one to one to one ratio. And it is um, gin, vermouth, and Campari. And the, the real trick of, I think, this drink is it's in your stir. You can measure the perfect ounce. You can do all those things. But I think that sometimes the stir is for the finesse. Well, you would call it finesse or the stir. I would call it the secret ingredient and being the love that you put into the preparation of the drink. People can make a drink or people can craft a drink. And when you love what you do, you bring something special to the preparation that you can't teach someone. Sure. It's just something that you have. And I think, as Gina said, 
That's what separates uh, an average drink from a, uh, an exceptional drink, is the love. Oh, it's it's a nice stir. Your... Look how quiet it is. Look how cute. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah, sexy. This is nice. <laughs> so I still believe in the old thing. I still count. Yeah. I don't know why. I still count. I still know when I get to 30 so what is or somewhere. That count? Uh, I do 30 rotations. Um, it's a little hot in this room, so my spoon is moving just a bit. But you can see it on the glass because the glass is frosting up super quickly right now. Um, so right now I'm at like 28, 29, 30. And you can see my ice has gone in. And look how much on the bottom it's already gone. So the humidity is not my bestie friend right now, but we're going we're gonna to make it work for sure. Um, okay, so now in the Negroni, I, I prefer my Negronis. You can do them up. You can do them on the rocks. We're going to do on the rocks because it's a nice hot day. So we stirred it, we made our drink, we're putting rocks in our glass. Um, so about, depending on the size of your cubes, you wanna do like four or five ice cubes, you've already stirred the drink, so you don't wanna put too much in there because then it's gonna get too watery. So that's why you limit to like 30 stirs or whatever your count is? Um, it's is that the purpose? It actually brings the um, drink down to um, below room temperature because your liquor is going in so hot. The best way to do it is to have your, um, Campari and your vermouth chilled, and then it would be um, a little bit, I don't know, but I would think a better ratio. But we are in New Orleans, if everybody is not aware. If you haven't noticed that my hair is doing um, the side bun thing, and I did not do this on purpose, uh, it is very humid, so I'm pretty sure it's going to rain at some point. And then so I would tell you this. Some of us have magic knees. Gina has magic hair. Like tells you that hair. trick me when the water. <laughs> <laughs> so I am cutting a few of these only because I like a nice true quarter. Some people like a half dollar. I am a quarter person, maybe a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that. And then I put it in. So I want to make sure that like everybody some people put a lot in, and I don't, I don't, that's not my thing. I don't love the giant horse neck of, uh, it's too much citrus for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that Tony's gonna be okay with us, because, hello. You know, it's funny we're talking about stirring and the proper amount of stirring, and you know, I, I always say you kind of feel it, you sense it when it's right, but I'm a firm believer that this business is, is about mentorship. You know, it is our responsibility to mentor the next generation of great bartenders and I learned from my cousin Helen Davis and she taught me similar to what Gina was saying 20 times to the right and 20 times to the left oh. when making a Manhattan uh, so I've, I've always had, had kind of adhered to that rule but now I just I kind of I was never good at going to the left you know I would just kind of feel it when it's right it feels correct um, but I just I need to touch on Helen a little bit she, yeah please she taught me well shall we cheers her Let's, yeah. I, well, yeah, yeah let's cheers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll make a drink in a second. Happiness is something she would always toast to all her friends. And, and it's a word that I've tried to, in her memory, keep alive. So you'll hear me say that a lot. And like, that was something that she would always say, you know, very that's beautiful. simple. That's yeah. really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So Helen and her mother, I'll give you the back Thank story. you for sharing Wait, this, Gina. No, okay? you can't leave her on the hook like Am that. Okay? That's not I mean, nice. Like that? <laughs> I was just going to say, I got to back up and kiss myself. That's so yummy. Yay! <laughs> That's Tony's delicious. Tony's a great actor, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe he'll be like, where's the grown <laughs> let, me, let me just take another chance. Yeah, make sure she, you, you got that right. <laughs> make sure oh, we yeah, taught her right all, all, all these years. <laughs> uh, that's a... Uh, well, we'll talk about Helen in a minute. I just want to tell you how I first discovered the Negroni. Um, today, we assume everybody knows it, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is my favorite drink. It's been well documented. Um, I ran into Simon Ford downstairs. He said, you know, you were really responsible in San Francisco for helping the resurgence of the Negroni. And I said to him, I said, well, that's very kind, Simon, but selfishly, I, I just wanted bartenders to learn it so I could drink it. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like, <laughs> I would go, go to a bar, I said, can I get a Negroni? And they go, oh, dude, we just ran out. Ran out of Negroni? Wait, ah, <laughs> uh, no Negroni, but how about a Peroni? No! <laughs> I'm like, it's like, Navan? What, they both start with N? Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Navan. So, 
But today, as you know, I mean, all great bartenders know this drink. It's become the bartender's handshake. And I think the drink really gained popularity by people like Gina promoting it, loving it. Um, you cut me, I bleed Negroni. That is, uh, that is my favorite drink. But when I first tried it in 1991, David O'Malley at Harry Denton's on Stewart Street made it for me. And nobody knew it then, 1991. It was, and I, I tasted it. I spit it out. I was like, is it supposed to taste like this? <laughs> I'll never tell him. <laughs> oh, no. But they say even Italians have to try it three times before falling in love. And that was the case for me. Thank God I stuck with it. Because once I did fall in love with it, it's a love affair that's, you know, lasted the rest of my life. And, uh, and this is a fantastic Negroni. I think that's Thank how you. my father thought about my mother. <laughs> <laughs> He met it three times. Like, all right, fine. <laughs> fine. Sign me up. <laughs> Regretted it ever since. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love your mother. Yeah. Delicious. Oh, my gosh. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So um, tell us about Helen, then. What, what you, you're doing with that is such an amazing project. Thank you. Uh, well, like I said, <laughs> Helen and her mother opened the Brass Trail Bar in Poirier, Michigan in 1937. So now if you think about women being in a bar in 1937, three years after the repeal of Prohibition, throes of the Great Depression, their family uh, owned an ice cream parlor. Her father dies, leaves her and her mother the ice cream parlor. Nobody's spending money on ice cream during the Great Depression. And Helen's mother says to Helen, said, Helen, we're going to be put out on the street. We don't turn the ice cream parlor into a saloon. And Helen said, Mom, proper ladies do not run saloons. <laughs> And I lo love this quote. Her, her mother said to her, said, Helen, a lady is a lady no matter where you put her, but she's got to have a buck in her pocket. Absolutely. So the two of them she's turned She's a very progressive woman. She was so progressive. Uh, she's 21. They turned the ice cream parlor into a saloon in 1937. She ran it for almost 70 years until her death at uh, 91. And uh, it's still in the family. My cousin Maroon runs a bar. But during that time, she survived breast cancer twice. Wow. Back when, you know, people didn't survive breast cancer. Uh, so in her memory, in 2010, I started the Helen David Relief Fund to benefit bartenders and their families affected by breast cancer. I oh, brought you a pin thank for you. each of you. Thank so you. Uh, so it's, it's truly, again, uh, keeping her memory alive, but... Bartenders helping bartenders. It's, uh, you know, it's, we've all been affected and we all know someone, um, six degrees that has, has gone through it. And We're lucky if it's six degrees, to we, be honest. Yeah, it's probably more like yeah. one or two degrees. Unfortunately, yes. But, uh, I'm sure she'd be very proud. Uh, she was very philanthropic and always instilled in me that it's better to give than to take. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll help a lot of bartenders for a long, long time. And it's a kind of a, it's a difficult thing because you don't want, you don't ever want to have anybody who needs your assistance. But we're there to help with the uh, incidental expenses, the rent, you know, the electric bill, groceries, things that, you know, you've, you've been diagnosed, you've gone through treatment, you're going through recovery, and you come out of it. 10 or 15 grand in debt because you haven't been able to work or your spouse hasn't been able to work and life still goes on. So uh, if you know anyone who, who needs our help, please reach out to the Helen David Relief Fund. We're there. And uh, for the for, and just in case, just so that everyone, if you don't get it correct, don't worry, just go to designateddrinker.show and um, with the episode and all of the, the recipes and everything, we'll make sure that link is right there too. So if you need to, absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm honored, drink I'm honored to be a part of it. So thank you. Well, Helen was, was quite a lady. Like I said, uh, she ran that bar for nearly 70 years and uh, taught me to be a bartender. And there's a funny story. When my father went to Helen in 1980 and said, I think Tony would make a good bartender. Helen didn't want to make me a bartender because in 1980, which is way before you guys were probably even, I don't know when you were born, but it had to be probably. Oh, yeah, I was only born in 1980. Okay. <laughs> Not me, Gina. No. No. 
But I'll shed a little light on what... That was this, high school me. <laughs> <laughs> this bartending world was all, you know, was like today... It's a culinary art. I mean, we've Absolutely. elevated being I a bartender. I call her a chef all the time, Absolutely. honestly. The, the care that she takes. And when you talk about the love that it takes, I also think it's passion and caring and, and that, that she puts into the glass. And, uh, yeah. and, and cheers. If you, cheers to more. Sorry, I want to talk to her. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm you. being, I don't we know. We can't make sure we include. Sorry, Gina. Oh, oh that's yummy. Yeah. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Technical bartending term. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. Yeah, I like Very, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's a smoothness to it, and like to art. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's that's not a good one. But I love being a bartender, and and when I'm, people ask me, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm a bartender. They say, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. I'm pretty happy being a bartender. <laughs> Am I supposed to do something else? You know, like, uh, because the profession, well, it wasn't something you aspired to as a career. You know, it was kind of what you did when you were finishing school or a part-time job or while you were working on your acting career, which was the case with me. Do um, you recognize me, by the way? Absolutely. 1993, <laughs> you might know this, I was the Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and flu guy. You know, mm -hmm. I spent all these years in the advertising world. You'd think I would have known that. <laughs> I didn't know that, Tony, and I've known you such a long... What? Here, hold on. Up here, a cold is more than just a runny nose. <laughs> Elka Seltzer Plus, you bet it. Were you a trucker in the in the thing, or uh, what were you? I worked on the docks. That's what you were yes, I worked yes. on the docks. Yes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, That's I, so funny. That was me, 1993. I was on my way. I was <laughs> <laughs> the and look, they got it right here at the yeah. Designated Drinker Show. <laughs> oh my God, I totally know what you're talking about now. My my girlfriend, growing up, she was on uh, the bologna commercial. You know, my bologna, the first name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, I know uh, that. Sister Myers. Myers. My sister in law was supposed Meyer, to do it. Right? Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. She still has royalties right that. Yeah, my sister-in-law should have done it. They took her. They lived in L.A. She was going to be the Oscar Mayer Wiener girl. She's like oh. three or four, and she had to eat the hot dog. She's like, I don't want to eat the hot dog. They're like, no, you need to eat the hot dog. And she's still to this day exactly really? the same way. She's like, but I don't want to eat the hot dog. And they're like, next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and out she went. <laughs> and, and that is the end of that. Yep. Okay, hold on. All right, I'm sorry. I'm just making little Christmas trees. I will wait. I will no, start. that was, um. yeah. So that was, that was me. And it wasn't until... So 1993, I moved to New York City from San Francisco to to be an actor. I, uh, you know, I'd done, I had a national commercial running, and like I said, I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to no, big storm Broadway. I'll be, uh, so I show up there, and of course, I'm bartending, uh, and I meet Dale DeGroff. I meet Dale DeGroff. <laughs> I just... <laughs> See a pattern there. <laughs> and so I go up to the Rainbow Room, you know, and he doesn't know me. You know, I put a suit on and back in those days. And you had to wear a suit to get in. And I sit at the bar, uh, 1993, and Dale was one of the bartenders at that time who actually knew how to make a Negroni. And with his patented flamed orange twist, which I stole from him, like many of us did. <laughs> uh, and... I just, I sat at the bar and I watched him work. And I watched the way his guests were watching him work. And what he was doing you know, with this revival of classic cocktails, because it wasn't happening really anywhere else, at least nowhere else on a, on a big platform. And we became dear friends and I was so inspired by that that I said, you know, here I am in New York trying to be a theatrical actor. And I think we should all chase our dreams. And I still love the theater. But I love being a bartender. And here's something, a profession I have complete control over. So after meeting Dale, I, I just kind of said to myself, self, yes, precious, <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be the best bartender you can be. Now, then there was nothing like this. There was no book deals or no radio interviews. There was just being a bartender. No designated drinker show either. It was no designated <laughs> drinker show. Um, so I'm, I'm partially so responsible today. here. What is it? Uh, I would say you are definitely for making our, our pathway. But go ahead. I love it. Keep going. Um, and I, when I had the opportunity with Harry Denton to go back to San Francisco in 1995 to reopen the Starlight Room, which was kind of like the West Coast version of the Rainbow Room in 
Manhattan. <clears throat> cable I, car. The, ca- yeah. and the cable Hello. car, yeah. Um, My first drink I learned out of me. <laughs> <With> eggs. <laughs> Not kidding. And that was kind of, you know, that was... For me, that was really the start of this craft movement and my involvement. It was the first time I was uh, allowed to write a menu. It was rare that you ever saw a cocktail menu up to that point. Um, the menu at the Rainbow Room that I saw that Dale put together in 1993 may have been the first cocktail menu that I really had seen. I'd seen like menus that were Manhattan, Martini, kind of those known classics, but something that was resurrecting lost and forgotten classics as well as original drinks, people creating drinks. Uh, today, you wouldn't go into you know a restaurant, a decent cocktail bar, and not be presented. A cocktail menu. A cocktail yeah, menu. absolutely. So this is all kind of new, and with that came the products that and drinks that we didn't know. I mean, the aviation, the casino, the corpse survival. I mean, none of these were being consumed or made. Uh, I, you know, the Pisco Sour, I put that on the menu at the Starlight Room. I mean, it was, nobody knew what Pisco was. I mean, I think at that time, the only Pisco was a Chilean Pisco, but people loved it. It was, you mentioned egg whites, and the first time I ever worked with egg whites was a Pisco Sour. The Caipirinha, you know, we put that on, and people were like, Brazil, Cachaça, what's... So, you know, Maraschino. We opened the Bellagio in 1998. I got the job from Steve Wynn after what the success we had. <laughs> Humble. I open the Bellagio. Move on. <laughs> I have the most successful cocktail program in the world. Whatever. <laughs> Keep going. Well, uh, <laughs> you can be a little gloaty about that, just so you know. Like, you know, how are you? Like, I meant the helicopter. I mean, the Bellagio. <laughs> so apparently, you don't have to because Gina's going to do it. I sophisticated <laughs> drinking while gambling instead of you drinking just crap. That's what you really did. Um, I love you. Is Gina on your payroll? Because I. Um, it's, <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> you know, me, for me, when I came up, right? This is gonna tell. This is how I knew of Tony. You ready? I got my first cocktail book, and it was uh, Dilford's Guide to Bartending. Yeah. Cable car was in that book, right? The classic cocktail, blah blah blah, could be found at Starlight Room, Tony Abigail. Wow. You know how long ago that was? I started bartending when I was in college, right? So I graduated college in two thousand. I went and started working at Penang in 2001, right after 9-11. And that was a gift from my friend who now is in Chicago and literally is a wine psalm. And he, every time he's like, I'm the one that did this. I'm like, you did, you did. <laughs> and, but you knew Simon Delford and there was something going on way before I even got on. Like really 2001, I was already late to the game, right? And the game really wasn't even being played that that big oh, yet. Oh no, not not then. And I got that, and I saw this, and it was like spice drum, quant. It has to be quantro, and I'm like, and egg white. I mean, blow my mind, right? I was like, made a drink, and it wasn't until I was like, I think it was 2005 or six when I actually met you. Yeah. I was like, oh, I know how to make your drink. <laughs> and he's like looking at me like this kid's crazy, and I was like completely dumbfounded. But I have to tell you that like. It was the legends, and like they are to me. And they're my living legends. They're my books on my shelf that are real people with it. And coming up as a bartender, you know, you're like always like, oh, I'm a mess. Like these are the people I, you know, had inspiration from, support, keep going, kid. You know, you got, you could do this, help with events, start guilds, whatever. Yeah. And then you read about them in books before you ever meet them, and like. You know, it's Dale and the Cosmos, and I mean, like, it's pretty epic. I live in a great time, but it, it, no, but, yeah. and thank you. That's it's very kind. You know, <laughs> but I mean, we, if I only knew better what what the direction we were going, there was no plan. It just kind of happened very, very organically. And thank God for someone like myself, and I'm sure Dale. We just loved what we were doing, and. Perhaps more than anything, it's that interaction across the bar. It's the art of hospitality, uh, and Helen always instilled that in me as well. You know, you know, to treat your customers at your bar like you would guests in your home, and that was to me 
what was most important. A great drink, great ice, glassware, everything that we've learned, bitters, tinctures, you know, all the crazy ingredients we have to work with today to craft wonderful cocktails, to me are second to the guest experience, right. you know, the hospitality. You know, I often, like, describe you guys as, like, chef-like. You're definitely chefs of the glass. But the difference is, is then chefs are usually somewhere behind a wall, and they're in a kitchen, and if they walk out on the floor, you're like, ah. Oh. But they don't have that one-on-one, -on -one, and I think that's one of the things to be a great bartender is that it is that it's that moxie it's that personality it's that i want to go have a not only i want to have a good drink but i want to have a good drink with you i want to have a good drink when you're there not just you know a good drink by a grumpy old oh, no. bartender is okay but no you give me that that personality and you know i'll stay all night absolutely and long whether before. you want me to or not <laughs> That's why they make the chairs the way they do. You, you, you're good for about two hours, and you're like, ah, oh, my. Yes, That's a new yeah. thing. Yes. No, I just stand then. Then I just stand. I like that. Um, I like that old, the old school bars, like really old school bars. You still, you still can get to like a couple of them, like have um, those great old leather bar stools that has a big wide base, and they're like not the remakes or the old ones. They actually have springs. They're actually super comfortable, right? Yeah. Now, that's what everybody does. They're like, oh, make the chair tinier so people can only sit for so long, and then you're going to get a numb ass. You're like, yeah. this is real? And like, you want to make money or you want to close? You're like, all right, numb the asses. We're yeah. in. <laughs> so, I mean, it is, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line between open and closed. Yeah. In this business, it's not, you know, no one's getting rich in this business. No, and the craft movement has been amazing. Um, you know, I think one of the things that maybe suffered a little bit during it because it happened so fast and is the understanding of hospitality because that's something you grow up with, you yeah. learn. I mean, it's something that you have, regardless if you're making craft cocktails or you're pouring Guinness and Jameson. I mean, some of my favorite bars, I would never think of or and I would love another drink by the yeah, way this one seems be. to be gone um, <laughs> never dream of having a Negroni but the bartender big smile handshake knows my name yes, knows how the Golden Knights did against the Capitals sorry <laughs> sorry not sorry I need mean, something like Gina <laughs> you know knows the, how the stock market closed knows that this is my girlfriend and not my wife um, <laughs> you know <it's, laughs> But he, he or she is a great bartender. Yeah. They embody hospitality. And you can make me the greatest drink, but like Gina said, if, if you don't have the personality, I, I, I just, I probably, yeah. it's like Gail said, and go ahead with the heart. Well. There you go. <laughs> I don't, don't go, go to bars, bars I go to bartenders. Exactly. Absolutely. I am the classic for the area that I live in. I know all the right bartenders. I know everybody by name. And actually, my friends all joke where I'm like, oh, no, I, I know somebody here. But then my other line is, but if I don't, give me two minutes. I will. There and you go. I am notorious for going back to the same spaces that have the right people. And when a business go, restaurant or a bar goes and the management is not right and they start losing their people, they lose me as a client. And I can, and because I enjoy the people. Yep. as much and you know what you might not be a great bartender but you can pour me a glass of wine in that scenario because you're right like you don't go to certain places expecting this you go there for a different experience altogether mm, some places can't pour a glass of wine that's for sure no there are I they mean, can't you really... keep wine is the problem <laughs> kind of like vermouth out on the counter Ooh. <laughs> I and mean, i make a pretty good negroni at home so why do i go out somewhere to have a negroni it's not for the drink it's for because I love Gina. I yes. want to see Gina, and she puts a smile on my face and makes my day better. Yes. And that's our job, I believe. Sometimes she doesn't day. make my day job. Really? But no, we work Paint. together. Yeah, yeah we got this yeah, show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So listen, we're going to have a debate. We're going to have a debate. We're going to have a debate. So I have, wait. I love Gina. Pitch of me now. No, I'm just kidding. So we're gonna make chocanos, okay? A peace drink, okay? Like a fun pisco I, drink. Okay, so I don't know this all right. at all. all I'm right. so chocano is a uh, pisco. Long story short, pisco, a citrus, and generally a ginger beer or soda water. Okay, mostly a ginger beer. Um, am I am I correct? Well, ginger beer, ginger ale, but ginger some ale, yeah. ginger, ginger sparkling. Yeah, sparkling. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's a change. So I am. 
uh, complete. So I, so I came in today like, oh my God, I'm gonna make Tony so happy. <laughs> I'm not gonna put any lines that, so you saw me cutting earlier on my uh, line. I'm like, so no zest, right? And he's like, what? I'm like, no skin. He goes, he's like, uh, why? And I'm like, well, I mean, uh, that's what I heard, uh, what? So we're gonna have a standoff, right? We're gonna make two Chocanos, we're gonna make one um, lime uh, skin on, okay. and one, uh, one lime off, and we're gonna see which one is actually the one. And I'm gonna keep my markers there because I'm gonna forget because I <laughs> did drink a grony. And this wasn't my only interview today. Good luck everybody with the rest of this show, okay? So we're gonna put two ounces in. You know, I just to tell you, we always give the clues away. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to know because, I mean, I, I, I've been doing this almost 40 years. No, I'm not going to tell him. He didn't see what you're, that's why I moved. No, I meant we tell when we are like what we oh. do. We're the things oh. that we break the rules and say, oh, by the way, we've been drinking all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what do you got going here? All right. So this is, um, it's, it's a, it's a fresh, fresh juice and it's just a little bit of, um, Orange, cayenne, lemon, and a touch of ginger. Oh, so you're doing a twist on a classic yeah. chokan. Yeah. So it's going to make it even harder to detect well, I mean, you skin to, on you skin to, off. You to go, I, I mean, if we uh, want to kind of compare. Hold on. You win. I'm, I'm, I'm away. Because I'm curious now, Gina. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Is, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This is, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I you, used it. Hold on. I used it. I, had a, I scented my skin with it, everybody. We're done. <laughs> Thank you so much for the juice. Fabulous. Next. All right. So now we'll do that for drink three. Exactly. So I did taint it though. I put a little bit of basil in here already, and I'm gonna have to keep it in there. Okay. Because it's already in there. I put two leaves of basil. Did you bundle it or just nope. put them in? No. Nope. Okay. I mean, so I could just take them out. Probably won't impact much flavor. I'm just so curious about this lime skin thing. I've never heard this before, and I've been working with uh, Peruvian pisco for a long time. Recently, on a trip to Peru, discovered Chilcano, and I'm a big mule what? fan, and well, this Well, now my is... next question is, now the next debate is, add the sugar or don't add the sugar, because some people add more simple to it, and I don't think it needs it. I, okay, for me, I don't add any simple. Okay, I don't think it needs it. So I mean, okay. that's a debate. There's like a different, there's recipes on two different, two different distillers that are like, no, you put sugar in, and one's like, no, you don't, so. I, I mean, my recipe has always been the basic recipe we, without a twist, pisco, and usually an achilado, uh, and it's got to be Peruvian pisco, not Chilean. Of course. Okay, beautiful. Um, and a good, healthy pour. Would you put two ounces? Yeah. Want to have another half? Um, I, I think mean, that um is yes. That means yes. <laughs> I'm going to translate to hell yes. Do you, want, do you want the two and a half? Or you want the three? Well, two, two, two and a half. I, I mean, it's uh, Come on now, we gotta be moderate here. Well, <laughs> it's all about balance. No. Louise, it's kind of like the daiquiri. I like to say about a daiquiri, if you put too much lime juice, the drink's gonna be tart. Yeah. If you put too much simple syrup, the drink's gonna be too sweet. Yeah. If you put too much rum, perfect. It's gonna be perfect. It's, <laughs> you cannot, uh, I mean, do you want me now? Now, now, here comes the next part. I mean, this is my this is this is why I love this having a little book here. Do you want me to shake it? Because I want to shake the base, but I will not shake it if you don't want me to. Okay, I am just being a pain in your butt no, here. Tell but me. With the Chilcano, I just build it in the glass. I, I squeeze half an ounce of lime. I put two ounces of um, achilado Peruvian pisco. I put a couple dashes of Tony Abuganum pecan chicory bitters. Wow. Well, that is not happy. We just now, didn't we? Kaboom. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Angostura bitters because this is a classic. You know, this show is completely shameless, so you might as well. <laughs> I picked up on that, so I thought I'd take advantage of <laughs> And then I stir it with a 24 degree spoon uh, from the modern mixologist. Uh, <laughs> ModernMixologist.com. <laughs> All right. And then, yeah, that's that's pretty much it right there. A good color. It looks gorgeous. Okay. And it's so refreshing. Okay, do not. This is the thing. We cannot move the glasses though, okay. because I then because then I won't know the difference. All right. All right. And now I need my spoon. There it goes. That's yes, that twenty-four degree. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it through. When you have a, a bubbly drink, do not stir too much. You no. lose your carbonation. Get up there. No, that's beautiful. All right. All right, so now the test here 
is that one is with the lime skin on, one is without. So when she squeezed the lime, one had <laughs> yeah. had rind, one had not. Okay, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna share, and we're not doing straws, right? Because no. we all agree. No, we're not. So we're going to share about this. Happiness. Happiness. Absolutely. Look at the focus, the concentration. I know. Now I'm like terrified. It, here's the real question. Which is better? Well, that's lovely. I really like the spice on that. What is that? What that's, am I tasting? It's it's ginger beer. Ginger and beer and Angostura. Yeah. I really like that. It goes good together. Pinky O. We gotta get this girl to South America. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and can we just tell everyone I'm from Hawaii then? Yes. Okay. Okay, They're I'm gonna tell you lovely. my palate can't tell the difference. This one seems to be a little sharper. Okay. This one has a touch more sweetness. Okay. Oh, you're right. As soon as you said it, yeah. but I needed a more educated uh, palate. You're right. I think I prefer this one balanced. That's a little too sharp. Skin on, skin off. Really? Wow. Skin off. All right. There it I'm is. A, I'm a believer now. There it is. It's Johnny, skin see, off. I'm a believer now. I wouldn't have. I mean, it's subtle. The difference is subtle. That's actually said. where that came from. Just saying. can you? Even <laughs> it was <that>? Johnny. <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> let's double check here. Yeah. This is this is a, this is an incredible thing. Like I literally, you know what? I'm so glad we didn't do anything else to it. I will put yeah. up another recipe on, you know, for a different variation of Chocano. We'll put the regulars. We have three uh, three recipe episodes. Yeah. Okay. So to get all three of those recipes, you're going to go to designateddrinker.show. That's designateddrinker.show. Show. <laughs> Show. <Thank you. laughs> I, we'll have um, all three of those recipes up there for you. And of course, we're going to have links out to um, the amazing things that you're doing. Thank you. And, um, and to where you get this amazing bar spoon. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, an incredible difference. Right? I mean, it's uh, they're both lovely. I would not kick either one of our, these drinks out of bed. Um, but if you ask me which one I prefer. Wow. Look at that. Today is a new day. Oh, only today, here, right here in the Designated Drinker Show, folks. Um, I love this debate. <laughs> now I wish that Johnny was actually here for like the fun to see your face, because I bet he's yeah. been making those without the skin for a long time. And it's funny, as much as I've worked with the Peruvian government and Pisco um, and been there, this is the first time I've ever come up against, do you take the skins off or not? I'm done. Okay, so close the show. <laughs> I am done. If I taught Tony something in my life, please, we're done. I don't have nothing else I can say. This episode is a wrap. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Holy crap. Really? <laughs> Come Just on, so everyone mom. knows, I'm going to let mom, you in. Yeah, it's Johnny Schulmer, Schulmer, right? And he is a master um, distiller of Pisco of this brand. Pisco Pro, oh, yes. So, um, yes. And so that's where this amazing information is coming from, from a very, very uh, uh, well, a, a great source. My mind's blown right now. I am finished. I'm gonna hang. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Tony. Today, yes. yes, today I'm done. I'm going to take this blue thing. I'm going to leave. We're going to be totally fine. You and fun. Napoleon. <laughs> Missing Napoleon, light his head on fire. We'll be fine. No, it's my problem. There you go. So I have to, you know, while I have you here, i got to bust your chops a little bit. You know, I really love it. Well, only because uh, two years ago we opened Libertine Social at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, and you have not been to visit us. I had two babies. <laughs> it's always an excuse. I had two babies. <laughs> Although I had to find, I found out that my new nanny will travel. So, I mean, we're okay with that. Or I can maybe convince somebody I work with to watch my kids pull side of me. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to hear on the show. What yes. the show is called again? It's called the Designated Drinker Dot Show. <laughs> you want to do a live show in Vegas? Yes. Not yeah. only would we do a live show, when the Capitals play the Vegas Gold Knights <laughs> in Las Vegas, <laughs> you come out, bring the crew, we'll go to the game, and we'll do a show uh, at Libertine Social. Can we just use the ice off the ice, the ring? Yeah. Oh, no, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a bad Can idea. Can you just imagine that? This is, this, I love it. I already love it. I'm in. I am totally in to do that, 100%. With, oh, like, tomorrow. I love that. Because... I mean, obviously, we're both big hockey fans, and it was a great series, the Golden Knights, I mean, for the first year. But I also have the great 
honor of doing the drinks over there. I, oh, I don't really? know if you knew that. I do the drink. I created the Behold the Gold drink. Oh, and, cool. Which is our signature drink for oh, our I Gold Nights. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you this. Did you uh, make a drink for the Stanley Cup? I did. It, it was called Defend the Fortress. Um, so maybe we can uh, we can try that. Uh, that. All right, let's. Yeah, let's I grew it. up on the ice, so not uh, in a different team, but I'm a big hockey fan. Well, Matt, I'm I'm a, a, I mean, I was a Red Wings fan my entire life. And, I'm, I'm a Blues fan. No, you get, you I'm a Blues fan. You can be bold. You can have your hometown like love. I right? agree. Absolutely. I agree. I'm a Blues fan. First, okay. that's that's tough love. That's hard. That is tough. That. that is tough love. And I second Caps, of course. But yeah, but yeah. But even with the Caps, it took 44 years. Okay, it's a, got, it's a slow burn. I got. I, I grew up an Islanders fan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to. I, I mean, tell a little joke, okay? Just a little one. It doesn't really fit now, but it fit going into the Stanley Cup Finals. Daily Dollar Shore? What is an Ovechkin cocktail? Go. A white Russian without a cup. (laughs) (laughs) He's got one now and so well deserved. He's 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 just a little... uh, (laughs) <laughs> no, he, he is an amazing hockey player. He's had an amazing Hope he career. lives in my neighborhood. He goes and, to uh, John's bar all the time. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's been there like four or five times. I didn't know that. Yeah. He just hangs out in my hood. I mean, I have to tell you, it's kind of interesting to see the cup like all around DC. It's been like oh. a really fun thing to see it. Like people doing all kinds of stuff with these shots, eating soup, oh. salad. I mean, they eat at, um, what did I see? Shrimp cocktail out of it. I saw Nuts. a big tin of caviar in it. And I yeah, thought, that, that. That's classic. That that's classic. seems Stanley Cup like. Yeah. Ish. Frozen oh, vodka and yeah. caviar out of the cup. Some oh. people don't realize that Tiffany's made that cup. That I, I believe that that is the oldest tradition in sports yeah. is the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Oh, really? And, I, and and I'll say this: where my seats are, and I was there at the game nice. when they won, where they brought the cup out. My seats are right there, so I I know I was very lucky to get those seats. And I, and if you come. You can sit in my seats, all right? You, fourth row off the glass. We have um, witnesses. We have witnesses. <laughs> but to see the cup come out, I never saw it ever. I've never yeah. seen the cup live. And to see it walk right by me. And, cool. and I have to say this about the D.C. fans. They were so classy. It was so – we had so many fans there. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. And I felt so – I mean, yes, we hated to lose, but what a great – year. What a great thing for Las Vegas. I mean, first year out of the gate. Never happened before in any sport. Who Uh, owns that team again? Bill Foley. Yeah, he has no money, so he couldn't get any good players. (laughs) 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 Tony, Tony, you make the drinks, get me every best player. Somebody design these these uniforms, make it good. Wait, what kind of diamonds on the blades? Let's get some diamonds on the blades. Stanley Cup first year. I love Vegas. Vegas The hold the gold. <laughs> Vegas will always be go big or go home. Oh, yes. And how about like the pregame shows? How beautiful was that? I mean, you've you've got Imagine Dragons yeah. on the ice. I mean, well, what they did this year, I will say, what they did this year was really elevated all of that. I mean, we had like Sting playing outside of like he only came out for like a couple of songs, but still, you're like he's on the streets of DC doing a little sh- short concert. Well, you're like, holy shit! Because you're trying to compete with Las Vegas, you had to pull out the Sting card to play. I, I think we beat you i'm just saying. you all right it was a great <laughs> series but i, I would mean, be I rem- go out to vegas tony we'll, we'll come out you got to come out we'll come out we're we're gonna, yeah. you got to come out and we'll support las vegas and 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 i'd be remiss i mean in just in tribute to what happened on october one you know the hockey team coming in and the way the city embraced it and this The hockey team embraced Las Vegas at a time where we really needed something to get behind positive. And I don't think anyone envisioned it being what it was, but there was, there's that underlying current of healing that happened for the city and it happened around the hockey team. And this may never happen again. And, and I hope a tragedy is like October one never happens again, but. To be able to have have something like this come out of it, and yeah, I, I just uh, 
yeah. It, it's, yeah, right. it's trying to find that, that silver lining, right? And just trying to f see the positive in all of it, if there is any. But this is really yummy. Oh, there's that technical bartending. There you go. Right. Yummy. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. Yeah. So, Gina. Yes. Oh. It's that time. Should we do it as a boxing match and be like, ding, 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 in this corner, and then you got to go home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we do a shot? Isn't that like the best way? I, I mean, Pisco. All right. This is the thing people don't realize about Pisco. Here we go. It's always celebrated in drinks, but it's really yummy. Yummy. All by itself. And I've never had a Pisco shot. You've never? What? No. Oh, not a another shot. first. There we go. All right. We shoot. We shoot. We shoot Pisco. Well, and shoot Pisco to shut it down. Well, wonderful Pisco. You know, Johnny is a dear friend. Diego with Barsal. He's the one who turned me on to drinking Pisco Neat. And he was one of the first people who introduced Peruvian Pisco to the United States back when no one knew it. Yeah. And I really think that this category is a growing category. If you're not using Pisco, celebrating Pisco at your bar, you're missing out. And it's just lovely all by itself. Cheers. So here's happiness. Happiness. Yes. happiness. In the eyes, in the eyes. Absolutely. We got to call it first, Louise. All right. We know what that means to do it every time. It's last call. Tony, we don't have to go home. We just have to get the hell out of here. All right. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>